In this video, I'm going to point out a key difference between the mixed design ANOVA and the analysis of covariance applied to exactly the same data. And I mention this topic in the chapter devoted to the mixed design ANOVA because I commonly observe people apply analysis of covariance to data that would be arguably more appropriately analyzed with the mixed design ANOVA. I discuss this topic in more detail in the ANCOVA chapter, so I encourage you to check that out for more details. There's one key element that I want to point out in this advanced topic of the chapter, and it's about degrees of freedom. And the take home message is that the mixed design ANOVA has one extra degree of freedom, and therefore, all other things equal, the mixed design ANOVA should be more powerful. And I'm going to show you an example here. Here's an example study where there were two groups. This is an experimental type design where we have a placebo and a treatment group, one and two respectively. And the hypothesis was related to something about a drug being able to help increase people's cognitive ability in people suffering from Alzheimer's disease. And so we have cognitive ability tested at time one, pretest, and also at post test, time two. So let me look at this from a mixed design and ANOVA approach, as I've described in the textbook thus far analyze, general linear model, repeated measures. We got a factor, I'm going to put time. And we have two levels, pretest IQ and post-test IQ. Click Define. I'm going to put pretest and post-test in the within subjects factor box and group in the between subjects factors box. I'm going to click on Options, Descriptive Statistics, Estimates of Effect Size, Homogeneity Tests. Click on Continue. I'm going to plot the means just so we can take a look at them. And there we go. And OK. So here are the results associated with the mixed design ANOVA. I'm just going to go straight to the plot first, just so we can get a sense of what's going on. So the means are exactly or almost exactly the same at pretest for the two groups, which is kind of what you expect when you use random allocation to groups. It's not going to be exactly the same, but you expect them to be pretty much the same. And we can see the treatment group at least numerically, has a, an increase in the mean in IQ score. And also, by comparison, the placebo group has evidenced a decrease, at least numerically. Haven't looked at any statistical significance. Now, the key question in the mixed design ANOVA is whether there's a statistically significant interaction. And if one is observed, then you would have support for the idea that the treatment actually works. So let's look at the mixed design ANOVA. First, let's look at the assumption of homogeneity of covariance matrices which has been satisfied with boxes M test 0.634. So that's well above 0.05 or 0.005 if you abide by Huberty and Potowski's recommendation to use 0.005 for this test. So that's not a problem. And we can see here tests of within subjects effects, the time by group interaction is statistically significant with an F of 4.155 and P equal 0.049 partial eta squared of 0 0.109, and importantly, with 1 and 34 degrees of freedom. So this was just barely significant with 1 and 34 degrees of freedom on a basis of an F value of 4.155, and therefore I would be able to support the hypothesis that the treatment works with a certain level of confidence. So now to analyze the data with the analysis of covariance, go into Analyze, General Linear Model Univariate. I'm going to put Group in the Fixed Factor box. And post-test IQ is the dependent variable, and pretest IQ is the covariate. Click Options, and Effect Size, Descriptive Statistics, and Continue. This is an advanced topic, and I assume that you have some familiarity with ANCOVA already. But just briefly, this analysis is going to test the difference between the means at post-test between treatment and placebo, controlling for any effects related to pretest IQ. And click OK. And we can see that the null hypothesis has not been rejected. The difference between the means placebo versus treatment has not been rejected. F equal 4.085, P equal 0 0.051, and a partial eta squared of 0 0.11. And importantly, the degrees of freedom are equal to 1 and 33. So I lost a degree of freedom in comparison to the mixed design ANOVA, which had 34 degrees of freedom in the denominator. Now the F value is not exactly the same, and the partial eta squared is not exactly the same. In fact, partial eta squared is slightly bigger, 0.11 versus 0.109. But no matter how you slice it or dice it, 
the ANCOVA has lost a degree of freedom. And so all other things equal, the ANCOVA is a less powerful statistic than the mixed design ANOVA. Now where things become more complicated is when the difference between the two means at time one starts to be more and more substantial. And depending on the direction of the difference in the means, the ANCOVA and the mixed design ANOVA can yield fairly substantially different results. And I talk about that in more detail in the ANCOVA chapter. And I should say that there's a lot of misunderstanding and confusion about this issue, about whether you should or shouldn't use ANCOVA. In this chapter, I'm just presenting the simplistic case where there's no difference between the means at time one. And because you lose a degree of freedom in the ANCOVA because of the inclusion of the covariate, it's a less powerful analysis. In the ANCOVA chapter, I deal with, with the more complicated issue of difference between the means at time one. Now I also want to take a minute just to test the equivalent assumption of homogeneity of covariance matrices in the context of ANCOVA, which is the homogeneity of regression slopes assumption. So I'm just going to test that quickly as well, general linear model, univariate, click on model, and we want to build the terms. We're going to include the main effects, main effect of group, the main effect of pretest IQ, and then we want the interaction, group by pretest interaction. Again, I cover this in detail in the ANCOVA chapter. Continue and OK. So the, the assumption of homogeneity of regression slopes on the basis of the interaction between group and pretest IQ was found not to be statistically significant. And therefore, that assumption has been satisfied because the p-value is greater than 0.05. Now, interestingly, it is closer to 0.05 than the homogeneity of covariance matrices test which is 0.634 versus 0.197. So I think that's a bit of an interesting observation that the two analyses can yield very similar results. But when it comes down to the assumptions, you will get different results. And you, you might reject the assumption of homogeneity of regression slopes more often than the homogeneity of covariance matrices. I don't know if that's true. I'm just pointing out they're not going to yield exactly the same results. In fact, they're a little bit different here. But for the sake of this example, we'll just say that they were both satisfied.